Welcome back to the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Today I'm having on my good friend, Jay Morrill from Large Family Table and Jay Morrill Stewart over on YouTube. If you're on YouTube and you've looked up large family meals or batch cooking or freezer cooking or stocking up for uh, what we're going to talk about is a grocery store in her basement, any kind of food preservation stuff, you've came across Jay Morrill. I've had the opportunity to hang out with her in real life a couple times and we, we have plans to do it again. So I think you're going to absolutely love this interview. We could chat forever, but we're going to limit it to about an hour. All right, let's dive in. My name is Lisa, mother of seven and creator of the blog and YouTube channel Farmhouse on Boone. Join me as I share with you my love for creating a handmade home from scratch cooking and a little mom and entrepreneur life along the way. Welcome, Jay Morrill. So... Jay Morrill has been on the podcast before, and she and I have had the opportunity a couple of times to meet in real life, which is amazing. So today for this topic, there's a lot of topics that Jay Morrill and I could talk about, to be honest. Business mom stuff would probably be one of like, the funnest thing for us to talk about. But I think we're going to talk about bulk cooking, which is what your focus on your channel is mostly about on your YouTube channel. And the grocery store down in your basement, which is very impressive. So let's start with introductions. For those who don't know you, tell us about you, your family, your YouTube channel, all that good stuff. Yes. Well, thank you, Lisa. Like I say, I just want to talk about all the things. So my (laughs) name is Jay Morrell. I am a mom of nine. My husband and I are going to have our 25th anniversary this summer. We have nine children, ages two through almost 23. So I've done it. I've launched two. Mm -hmm. And in about a year and a half, I'm going to launch my third. They just then start launching. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I don't have a newborn at this time, but I do have children pretty much in every phase of life. I'm also a Grammy. My oldest son has been married almost four years and I have a grandbaby. I mean, it's just life marches on. So it's our 18th year of homeschooling. And all of this requires a lot of food, Lisa. Yes. Having all these people at home all Mm -hmm. day, every day. (laughs) So... As far as finding me, everyone can find me by my name at YouTube. Uh, super easy just to go to largefamilytable.com to right. find me. Yeah. I've been on these internet streets for over a decade. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, over a decade. <laughs> I know. That's I was right. Who I was telling my husband that lately I've been feeling like I'm old in this blogging world. Like for a while when I first started, I was like, oh, I'm the new kid on the block, you know? Like I felt like there were all these established bloggers and I was like trying to, you know, and now I'm like, oh, I've been, now I'm, I feel like I'm one of the old ones, but still I haven't been around for more than a decade. So, okay, so let's dive into the topic at hand. We're going to talk about bulk cooking and your strategy for that, and your grocery store in your basement. Let's start with that. Tell us about this grocery store in your basement, just what it is for those who haven't seen it. Yes. So 2020 happened. I don't know. Did anything change in anyone's hearts and minds during 2020? (laughs) That was a pretty, it was a radical life-changing experience. And I've always for about two decades, I've done once a month grocery shopping and I've done big batch cooking starting really when we were a family of five. And I've, I'll try to have, like when we're done with four weeks of groceries, there's still enough there to get through a week or two if we had to. But besides my freezer meals, which we'll put a pin in that and come back to it later, as far as long-term food storage and pantry storage items, I didn't have a large amount stored. People see my grocery shopping hauls on video, on YouTube and they just think it's this astronomical amount of food. But whenever you're feeding 11 people all day, every day, and you know, you spent $1,200 at Costco or whatever, you will go through that in a couple of weeks. If you work from home and school mm-hmm. from home and snack from home and have friends right. over, yeah. I mean, it's just gone. So mm-hmm. when 2020 happened, I felt foolish in a way. You know, I have put, as we have already mentioned, well over the past decade into growing my online business. That and homeschooling my children and caring for my family is what all my time has gone into. So I have dabbled in the homesteading Mm -hmm. life. I've raised chickens for 15 years. I butchered my first chickens barefoot and pregnant with my fifth child because I had mean (laughs) roosters and I wanted to know I could do it. Like, 
I, I grew up with food insecurity. And so that is also in the back there. I just want to know I can feed my family. I can butcher a mean rooster. I can do whatever it takes to feed us. Right. So when 2020 hit, I thought, Mm -hmm. Oh, I, as if there really are 48 hours in a day, I really should have been doing more homesteading, more food preservation, I feel foolish for only having a 25 pound bag of oatmeal because now I can't get oatmeal. I feel foolish for not knowing how to milk a cow or milk a goat because we're limited at the grocery store. I could only buy one gallon every time. Now we're a gallon a day family. And Mm -hmm. even 15 years ago, 12 years ago, once a month grocery shopping, I still bought 15 gallons at a time because I froze half and I had the other half in my second refrigerator that I had at the time. And uh, I tried to stay ahead on our milk because we go through a lot. So again, in 2020, we didn't even have the milk we needed. So all of us were at home. All of us had any possible activity that was coming up canceled. And we had just moved to a new property where for the first time ever, I actually had room for food storage. You don't have to have a basement, and we can get into strategies for stocking up without a lot of storage room. But I actually had one. (laughs) You know, I had a basement, and I had this other cinder block room in there that I could store food in. And I just got busy putting that time into this whole other avenue that I wanted to explore, but I didn't have the time to before. And we did Mm -hmm. it as a family. So we bought a, a La Mancha dairy goat that gave a gallon a day. We learned how to milk a goat. We got a gallon a day from her for nine months. We froze milk. We did some cheese. I did some dairy goat milk things with her, but that was our milk source during that time because I thought, you know what? If I spend $400 on a goat, that's I'm going to spend, even if I could have bought milk at the store, I I knew I would be saving money at some point. Mm -hmm. And I just got about the business of learning what I needed to know, taking a crash course in long-term food storage, and also building out a pantry. So I got a couple books. I got a book by my friend Karen Morris called A Year Without the Grocery Store. And it's phenomenal Mm -hmm. for anyone who wants to get started. And then I got another book called Prepper Pantry. I believe it's by Daisy Luther. I just went on Amazon and I got some food storage type books. They were small. They're easy Mm -hmm. to read. Karen even has the audio book that you can listen to, I think in like three or four hours. And I've had her as a guest over in my membership many times over the years. And she's Mm -hmm. just a wealth of knowledge. So I followed Karen's system for doing food storage buckets. So as I was able to, I would get my oatmeal. I would get larger bags of sugar, larger bags of salt. And I do have videos of this up over on YouTube. Like I went into Sharp Shopper, which it's a fantastic local discount grocery store. It's only in Virginia and Pennsylvania, but I will have viewers that like when they're in Virginia from California, or they will take a road trip from Michigan, like they will come and Sharp Shopper's a destination. (laughs) So if you're coming through these States, you know, they had a fantastic deal. I don't remember the price now. Let's say it was 12 pounds of noodles for $4.99, something amazing like that. And there were 50 bags. Well, I could buy 10 of those bags and put them in my long-term food storage buckets. And I sealed them. I learned how to seal in mylar, use an oxygen absorber. So now I've been doing that for a couple years and I've been rotating our different items. Like the kids know if we're out of oatmeal, they bring a bucket from the basement. Like it's a, it is long-term food storage, but I'm trying to rotate and actually use it too because Yes, it would be great to have oatmeal that is sealed for 20 to 30 years. But as a newbie, a couple years in, I need to make sure that my sealing worked, right. that, you know, that the whole process worked. And I do have some buckets of things now that I won't go through the mylar and the oxygen absorber. Like I have learned, okay, really with this oatmeal, we're going to be going through this in the next year. It should be fine with a gamma lid and a bucket. Okay. But that's yeah. just part of that journey I've been on. So also yeah. within that time, as I came across inexpensive canned goods. So I am way deep into home canning now, but I also thought part of the whole goal of the year without the grocery store book is obviously having a year of food storage that your family's always working through. But again, for a family of 11, that's a lot of food. Right. 
And so that's where I have bought flats of cans. Now, my goal is to, to rotate as we rotate through those. And as I continue to do more home canning, I eventually, sure, I want you to go into my pantry room and I want it to be a years, a, a year or more of home canned items that I have canned with chickens I have butchered because we've perfected that skill over the last few years. You know, I want to get there, but I'm not there yet. I right. have great value canned goods. I have Aldi canned goods. And as I use those, like I just, if on YouTube, I have a video where I can tomato sauce for the first time. And it was 380 pounds of tomatoes I bought for a great deal last <laughs> Go fall. Go big. <laughs> Go big. And, and that is me. That's just who I am, right? And so I did that tomato sauce. Now, no way is that a large family year supply of tomato sauce in advance, but it's part of the journey. Eventually, I hope to be out of my great value tomato sauce. Yeah. So there you go, Lisa. I'll <laughs> so are you keeping inventory in any kind of way, like a spreadsheet or mostly just visually moving things forward and putting new things in the back? So people have asked me that. I do have emergency pantry printables that I give for free for folks. But I personally, I'm a mom in there working with this food every day. Right. You know, I'm planning our meals. I'm planning my big cooking. I'm filming different things. I'm, you know making a gro- a list, like I'll have a, a whiteboard or a list on my phone of, of things that we need to add on to. And so I don't have like documentation of everything I have. Like I have 48 cans of corn that I need to work through. Right. But I see because I'm using it. It's not just storage that we never get into. I see, okay, I have quite a bit of canned beans. Right. But I'm still home canning beans because I'm growing there too. And I mix and match. And that's another topic. As I grow in my home canning skills, I am using those items too. And some viewers have said, well, no, no, wait, wait, why are you using those? Well, I have to use them to see how to work with them. You know, working with home canned ground beef is different than whenever you cook your ground beef and you drain your fat. You know, there's certain things like I can do sloppy joes with that. You know, I can do sauces with that, but I can't do meatballs with it or meatloaf, right? (laughs) So I'm using those items to get them into my mama workflow in my kitchen too. Right. Yeah. I want to take a break from this episode to tell you about today's podcast sponsor, Carly Jean Los Angeles. Carly Jean is a mom of four based out in L.A., who has curated beautiful capsule wardrobe collections on her website, carlyjeanlosangeles.com. I love that the clothes fit in all different seasons of life. So I wear her items through pregnancy, postpartum. I just pick and choose the things that I feel like will work for me. For example, like not right now because it's super hot out, but there are these long cardigans that are lightweight. So I guess it's really not a cardigan. But I like it because it turns any outfit into something just a little bit better. But I can wear it whether I'm pregnant, whether I'm nursing, and it's quality. So it's stuff that lasts. I have a few pairs of jeans from Carly Jean that I've enjoyed for a really long time. A few staple dresses, staple tanks. They have these basics that are made right here in the US. I love curating my closet so that I can go to it and quickly see something easy to wear. I spend very little time getting ready in the morning. And so it's really important for me to have this minimal curated wardrobe that I can quickly pull from and look put together as a busy mom. Carly Jean is offering Simple Farmhouse Life listeners 20% off your first order with the code farmhouse. So you can head over to carlyjeanlosangeles.com Use the code FARMHOUSE. It's a one-time discount code, but it it does apply to the whole order. So go check out their basics. Go check out any of their new dresses. I have a bunch that I'm really excited to wear all summer. Again, CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com. Use the code FARMHOUSE. Okay, tell us more about these Mylar bags. I, I have them on a small scale for my freeze dryer. I'm assuming based on you saying something about oatmeal that you have larger ones or where are you getting those and how do those work? So I have the small ones for my freeze dryer as well. And uh, on Amazon, you know, you can go on and you can buy like when you're out of all your harvest right ones, you can buy the small ones on Amazon and you can buy 
one gallon mylar, three gallon mylar, five gallon mylar bags. And so okay. I will have a five gallon bucket and I will have, I'm guessing I'm not looking at it. So it's either three to five gallon or so a larger mylar bag. And I can usually get 20 to 25 pounds of most dry good items in a bucket. And so I pour it in and then what is it I have? Well, you know, with the freeze dryer, you get that harvest right sealer that comes. Sealer. Mm-hmm. But yep. before yep. that, what people used for the mylar was like, a well, bef- originally the first time I heard it, people would take a board and they would take a clothes iron and they would fold the mylar over the top and they would iron oh. the mylar to oh, seal it once they put the, marks, the oxygen absorber in. Yeah. So, you do that on YouTube once or twice, and then you learn, no, Jay Morrell, what you really need is a hair straightener. So I learned so much from my viewers, Oh, that too. makes a lot more so sense. So then, I, then uh-huh. I got a hair straightener. But in Karen's <laughs> book, she taught, you know, the board and the iron method. Uh-huh. But then things are sealed. And some things like brown rice, uh, you know, because it can go rancid, really will only potentially be a few years. But things like White rice, if sealed properly, could be 20 or 30 years. So it's just nice to be storing things. Like I have beans and sugar and flour and different types of rice, basically all kinds of dry good pantry items that I do in five-gallon buckets. I generally get my buckets from Lowe's. And the Gamma Lids, you couldn't get those hardly in 2020. Since then, I've stocked up on more Mm, of those. Yeah, I love those. And then, like I said, though, Mm -hmm. certain items that I know that we will be using in more recent times, I will not personally use the Mylar because I know we're going to be going through that sugar, you know, the organic cane sugar from Azure or whatever. And I'll just have some buckets there ready. Yeah. Well, how do you know how long something's going to last without the Mylar? Like, when do you decide if it's going to need that or not need that? I think about how long things last in my pantry. You know, back at in my farm, my right. hundred year old farmhouse, I would get the 25 pound bag of oatmeal and I would break that into the gallon Ziploc bags because I, I didn't know about bucket storage then. I wish, you know, all the things you wish you would have known 10 or 15 mm-hmm. years ago. Um, and we would yeah. work through that usually sometimes within a month or within a couple months. I'm thinking through Lisa, I'm thinking through my, my based on how I've seen pantry items last before. Right. Um, but I also, I have had mice situations in different homes Mm -hmm. and at this house I have not. Now I also have a lot of farm cats, but keeping things in mylar protects it from mice. But even these buckets, mice will chew through anything, but it does give you another layer of protection compared to it just being in its regular packaging. Right. Yeah. So are you pulling the oxygen out on anything? Like, are you, do you have a vacuum sealer for something? When I do, because I want to grow in these skills, when I do the Mylar bags, I, and especially when I first started, I put an oxygen absorber in everything. Yes. Okay. And so, so I have a good bit of those with oxygen absorbers. And then, like I said, some more like black beans or whatever, some more recent things I'll keep without an oxygen absorber. So yeah. Yeah, I'm stocked up on pantry staples because I I want to have, right. if we had an emergency, I mean, cough, cough, I don't know, will we ever have any of these kind of emergencies in our world? But what if we couldn't go to the grocery store for a year and I need to feed my family and probably some other people too? Right, right. So a lot of my buckets, especially the ones with oxygen absorbers and mylar, are stored with that thought in mind. But I will take from those again, like I will grab an oatmeal from there, cut the mylar, make, just to make sure that it worked, you know, two right. or three years ago. Uh-huh. And then I know if I want to put up, put up, you know, 50 more pounds of oatmeal, I know that my process worked. I think I like the idea of doing that anyway. And then you have both. You have the convenience mm-hmm. of being able to go down to your basement whenever you need something like oh, we're out of sugar. I imagine that doesn't happen in your house. You're never out of sugar or out of any of these staples that you might need to make something really quick. That's not something that you're going to experience. And and part of my my mental inventory is we had worked through 
a, a five gallon bucket, which was 25 pounds of Azure sugar. And, uh, you know, especially during the holidays, it wasn't all at one time, but you know, the buckets here, it's under my Island. We have a smaller little container in the kitchen we refill, but eventually that bucket goes. And especially when doing canning and stuff, canning, you know, strawberry jam, all that. Mm-hmm. And so just mental note to myself, okay, well I'm down a 25 pound bucket of sugar. So right. that means I could get another 50 pound bag from Azure and I could do two more buckets. Yeah. Yeah. And just economically, you come across these good deals that are, they're always better whenever they're in bulk, but you think, how could I possibly go through all of this? When you're set up like this, you can take advantage of the pound for pound savings of being able to just have it down in your basement. So that's right. Yeah. Let's talk about, well, actually, I want to ask you one more thing. Where did, sure, what sure. are, what's your favorite source for the gamma lids? I know I get them from Azure Standard. I've gotten them from Amazon. So, yeah, usually it's just Amazon. I have seen them at Lowe's some. I'm a, I'm a big Lowe's shopper, you know, so yeah. I've gotten some there, but mainly it's Amazon. But when I had gone to order buckets and lids from Azure before, they just, they were out of stock, you know, mm-hmm. so Amazon. But again, in 2020, they, they were hard to get. Even Mylar was hard to get. So that's just a little hat tip to mm-hmm. have have some Mylar that you're not using yet that you know, you know, you might need. Right. Yeah. Stock up on that. Yeah. If you don't have a lot of space, how do you do this? Because I feel like I'm in that camp, although I feel we could set our basement up a whole lot better than we currently do. And we've talked about doing that. Um, so if you don't have a lot of space, which I did not have a, a lot of space for many, many years. So you have to think creatively. There are places, especially this is great. Like if you get a flat of corn at Aldi, by the way, I went into Aldi the other day and they have canned goods for 50 cents still, which is almost unheard of, you know? So if you, we can talk about building Mm -hmm. a pantry frugally, but let's just say you spent $6, you know, and you got a, got a case of corn or you got a case of black beans or whatever. You can get creative if you know, your cupboards or your pantry closet. That's what I had in my last two houses was literally just a closet. You can put those flats under your couch. You can put those, you can put flats under your bed. True. (laughs) You can put flats, again, plug for Karen's book, but for a year without the grocery store. And when I've interviewed Karen before, she has talked about how they put risers, they put risers on their beds. So their beds actually were up substantially higher so she could get five gallon buckets under her beds. Oh. And sometimes if you maximize that, sometimes people might have another bedroom. Like maybe you could, I know in large families, we, you know, we have four kids in a room or whatever, but you might be able to do some bedroom configuration also Mm -hmm. where you could literally give another room in your house to food storage. It would just depending on what a priority it is. Right. Um, yeah. You know, you might be able to reconfigure some things. Like if if dad had a work office at home, I don't know. You have to talk to dad about that. But, um, you know, you could potentially move some things around. But if you can't do that, get under every couch and under every bed. You could get the Rubbermaid totes potentially. There's the long, thin ones for underbed storage. They're not even talking bucket storage, but as far as like canned goods right, right. and items like that, which is where a great place to start when building your your grocery store in your basement equivalent. There's a lot of room under couches and under beds. Now, what about garages? How? What's the temperature that you recommend for something like this? So I have stored things in my garages. The thing, so I would not put the buckets with the mylar in your garage, because that mylar is going to sweat depending Mm -hmm. on, you know, you really have to think of like climate controlled situations, right? Because that can ruin your food storage. That's something to consider, but you could have something in mylar. Now mylar, you can also like accidentally poke a hole in it, but I'm just brainstorming here for someone. If they had like flat, if they had their mylar sealed and could put it under their bed, you know, in a more climate controlled situation, that would be an option too. But for garages, I have had my extra, my refrigerators and my freezers in my garages. And a lot of people have feelings about that, but I had no other where to put them, no other space and everything. Those appliances continued on. I also have had my canned goods stored in my garage, especially this house 
when we first moved in and I was really getting my vision and configuration straight, I've had canned goods in garages and I haven't had any issues, but okay. things like, you know, noodles in the bag that came in, flowers and any of those pantry staples, you are going to get mice. You are going to have temperature issues. Those things you really do. Now you can also like freeze your flour, which is good to do anyway, because of the bug eggs and flour, you know, it's good to freeze it for a couple days anyway. Yes. That's what I've heard. But you don't want to, again, buy a bunch of flour, buy a bunch of noodles and such, and just leave them in their packaging in the garage. Right. Yeah. (laughs) That makes sense. That makes sense. I actually, the other day, I I on a whim, I had no plans of doing this, but we have this really large cabinet area in our kitchen and it was made as an office. Like that was the reason why we designed it. We built it was to have like cameras and computers and all of the things like printers that go with running a home-based business and in the kitchen office. And I had everything like it, it's more space than you need for just the office. And the other day I was thinking, this is not how if I just moved into this house and it had this cabinet space available, this is not at all how I would think to organize it. It was only because my brain first thought office. And so I took everything out and I reconfigured things. I got rid of some things and I now have this whole section floor to ceiling for food storage. That was all in my pantry before. And I also have another cabinet where there would be a dishwasher and I'm, I'm fine with sacrificing space. I know a lot of people aren't, but I have a cabinet where a dishwasher could go. There's plumbing to it where I have three, five gallon buckets of grains with the gamma lids, honey and coconut oil. So I, I basically reconfigured my kitchen to make it more efficient for stuff like this, because I think, I don't know why, but like, it would definitely stress me out to have food under my bed. I don't know why. Like it, it shouldn't, <laughs> but it would. Well, it like just, I'd be it's like, just an option. Yeah, it's yeah, just but it an, is option an option for someone like who has yeah. nothing. Like they don't have the wall of cabinets or the di- like. There's just there's everything. Exactly. There's nothing else. Yeah. Okay. Well, if nothing else, you can put it in your bed. You can put it under. And your it's bed. true. Yeah, and that's that's a space I would never have thought of to redeem. There's space there where. There's nothing going on there, you know? And and if there's right. cans and things stacked, you're not going to have the random sock or Lego yeah. end up under there. So right. that's you don't have pretty to nice. Be, right. And, <laughs> yeah, and again, this is good. for, you know, like a rotating emergency food storage. So right. these don't have to be items that you're using this month. But you right. can know, like you have your tomato products in the kitchen and you know you're getting to the end of that. And then you know, okay, under... Under Susie's bed, I need to go and, and reload the, the tomato products in the kitchen. That's just being creative with the space that you have. Uh, but even it like is, you were saying, yeah. with your wonderful built-in cabinets that you're using now, I mean, someone could do some sort of cabinetry in another room, right? Some kind of right, built-in right. or Ikea situation. That's just mm-hmm. how important our food storage is. And I like the idea of going and getting like a Ikea, some kind of thing that you could like put in a room. So that way it didn't feel as shoved. It felt like very much like, okay, well, we have a pantry in one of the bedrooms and and you just know that that's the pantry and that's where stuff right. goes. In my mind, I like categorizing things like that. Like this, even if it's in the room, just knowing that the whole thing is pantry would help me. It has a plate. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. You could definitely do that on like any open wall. That would work great. I want to take a break from this episode to tell you about the School of Traditional Skills. The homesteading family, you may have heard of them if you follow along with them over on YouTube, has a ton of knowledge to share through their YouTube channel, but they also created this amazing resource called the School of Traditional Skills, where they go to these experts' homes or farms and create professional videos sharing something that is a skill that is necessary for simple living, homesteading, from scratch, cooking. Some examples are homestead planning, that's a new one they just added, pressure canning, reclaiming pasture, raising pastured meat chickens, back to eat in gardening style. They did a class with me on fermenting vegetables. They have garden season extension, curing pork, so many things. I don't, I'm not going to read through all of these <laughs> because there's so many. And I actually just got an email from them 
that they were shooting a cheese making and dairy class. I'm really excited for that. They're adding new classes all the time and you can get access to all of these skills, these very professional style videos that teach you things that if you're listening to this podcast, you, you likely want to know. Maybe not all of them. You can pick and choose. I've watched through some, some I feel like I already kind of know, some I feel like I'm not currently interested in knowing. Like cheese making, I'm just now interested in that. But for so long, I was more, I wanna learn nourishing bone broth with Sally Fallon, and then moving on from there. You can check out the School of Traditional Skills through my link, bit.ly forward slash farmhouse skills, and see if it would be a fit for you, if that's something that you are looking to learn. Some of these skills very in depth from experts. Head on over again to bit.ly forward slash farmhouse skills. Okay, one of the top questions I got whenever I talked about this episode over on Instagram was bulk buying on a small budget. I'm sure that's probably like the number one question you get on your YouTube channel all the mm-hmm. time, just knowing YouTube commenters. Right, right. So in what ways do you feel that this is affordable or if possible, like in what ways has this actually saved you money? So bulk buying in a budget. I, I hear from a lot of families who wait and, and I know families like in real life in my town you know, in my local activities and they wait until tax time every year and they will take 500 to a thousand dollars and they will, you know, whatever big amount to them and they have it dedicated to building their food storage. And so that's when they will get, you know, two or three of the large things of honey from Azure. They will get as much rice as they can. They put that money into their food storage where some people, you know, we all have different, different things we use money for, but sometimes it's a vacation or updating this or that. And they just know number one priority is food storage. Something very simple that I think everyone can start with that I mentioned already is buying the canned goods at Aldi. Uh, Again, 50 cents a can, some things got up to 78 cents a can, but even home canning takes an investment and it takes work and practice on the front end. Although I don't think it's difficult. I think everyone should get into it. But if nothing else, if someone could take, you know, $10 a week, what is that, Lisa? Over $500? Yeah. $520 for the year. year, I recently did a video where I went to Costco and I did a starter emergency food pantry, like shop with me. I showed exactly what to buy in the stores. I bought it all. I brought it home. Now I donated that to a local single mom friend of mine who has a bunch of kids and doesn't have any food storage. So, cause people worry about jam you have all that food. Why are you buying all that food? So I did the video (laughs) to help show people if all you have is $500. I think I came in a a little under 600, but I also broke it down to where they could do this week by week, you know, $10 $10 or $20 um, a week. Some people can only do $5 a week. But over a year, if you put that couple hundred dollars into your food storage, you will have a good food storage. A, excellent, especially compared to having nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so in that, I, you know, I showed about buying the rice in bulk, buying the beans in bulk, um, buying spices in bulk getting your sugar in bulk. And because not everyone has an Azure delivery. I did not have Azure close to my house until like within the last six months or so. Before that, my deliveries were 45 minutes away. And that, and a year ago, there was no Azure anywhere in my part of the state. So Azure's great for those of us who have it, but if someone doesn't, you know, and so they may not have a Costco, of course, well, do they Mm -hmm. have a Sam's? But I think people could go to Walmart and I, right. I do plan to do that video later this summer where I'm going to go to Walmart and for a few hundred dollars do a whole emergency pantry and I'll give it to another mom. But it's just showing even those great value products. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They will not. They're not the best. Right. But especially whenever you read the uh, may contain bio engineered, <laughs> read your labels. Right. Try to yeah. get the best that you can <laughs> for your budget. But if all you had was a small budget and you could spend ten dollars a week at Walmart, that'll be over $500 in a year. And if you dog ear that $10 just for building your pantry, and then from there, you could start rotating those items and replacing them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
I like that. The other day, my daughter asked me, like, we're running this hypothetical scenario. If, if we couldn't go to the grocery store for a year, what are the first things we'd buy? And my my first instinct as a homestead person went to, like, animal feed. Because I'm like, well, if we have enough hay yes. <laughs> and chicken feed, we can live off of milk and eggs. But right. I didn't really consider all of the inside pantry stuff that would be appropriate for that. So what would your answer for that? Like, what would be the top 10 things you would stock up on if you were just starting out on this? So, so let me see if I can. So I would do rice, of course, beans. You know, you do black beans, mm-hmm. pinto beans. I mean, we've had times we've pretty much, I feel like I can do pinto beans a lot of different ways, you know, peanut butter. Jelly, of course, we can do home can jelly, but again, we're saying we're just trying to stock up at the right. store. Yes, um, sugar, we would do spices, oats. I, maybe? I also, yeah, oats. I also got things in that emergency hall, like pancake mix that was ready to go with just water. Um, okay, thinking of an emergency, something I have read that's good for kids. You know, if you are in an emergency situation. Uh, trying to have the the little things that would be joy. So even a thing like, again, at Costco, the lemonade mix. Okay, don't drink it all day, every day. But if all you had was water and things were limited and you could throw some of that lemonade mix or something, some kind of flavoring. Also things like coconut oil, whatever kind of cooking oil that you use. Oh, yes. Uh, coffee. Oil. <laughs> Pri- priority things oh, you want to goodness, have on that'd hand. that'd be number one uh-huh. on the list. <laughs> <laughs> salt and vinegar. I've, I've used vinegar for cleaning for years, but you can just use it for so mm, many things. So yes. that's just a quick flash in the pan. Um, mm-hmm. if you were going in and just stocking up on basic things. And of course, like people say, you want to stock up on things that your family uses, but I feel like a lot of those things are things that any family can use and make work. Right. Now this isn't obviously like years and years and years long term, but to what extent do you use freezers and stock up on things that are perishable? So I have used, I have used freezers for, for the two decades now, as far as for freezer meals and such. Now my freezer meals have grown to the scale where I'll do, you know, 30 or 40 at a time, probably over the last 10 years or so. But even back as a family of five, when we first started homeschooling, I worked as a nurse and I had three children at home, ages six and under, and we were homeschooling and I worked weekends, that weekend night shift, getting 40 hours in over three days. So I quickly learned to do what I call like one for now, one for later type freezer, freezer meals. Uh Right. So I love having a few months worth of things in my freezers. Like I just did a bunch of freezer meals in February it was 40 freezer meals. And it doesn't mean we only eat breakfast freezer meals all day, every day. But right now, like end of April, we were through those. And I need to do another breakfast freezer cooking day. Those are helpful for now. I also have a beef freezer and I have a chicken and pork freezer. You didn't ask me how many freezers and refrigerators I have, but I I was curious. I I have a lot. (laughs) I have collected them. And so I am personally working because again, these are skills I've been growing in the last few years on like when we have a whole cow, because we buy a whole cow at a time, like you guys do. um, Mm -hmm. I'm working on canning as much of that as possible. And then getting that. Okay. So getting that out of the, and I've I've done a lot of projects where like I canned a lot of the chickens that we raised and home butchered last year. This year, when we butcher, I plan for those few months around. Now I need freezers to hold them in. But I plan to be canning, you know, the 500 pounds of chicken meat or so that we're going to raise, or I think it's 750 pounds, depending on how the math goes. I plan to can as much of that as possible. But I don't have that system fully in place. I'm growing in it. So I have between, well, I I know a lot of large families who don't also have like mega food content businesses. (laughs) And they'll have four or five yeah. freezers, you know, but I do, <laughs> I do a lot of filming and I, but I also, and I feed a lot of people and I do a lot of recipe development. So like I have right. a veggie and fruit freezer, but a lot of regular large family moms do too. And I have, um, a freezer dedicated to my freezer meals, but the, the high end, you know, the things that are the most yeah. valuable, which is the meat. I went through right. a few months ago and I've, I've been working on can't. We also bought a whole hog. Now we're raising our pigs and we hope to have our first pigs that we've raised butchered this summer. 
And then my, if you didn't ask me about homeschool, my homestead goals, Lisa, but here we go. But I hope to by That's next right. year be able to do our <laughs> own pig butchering here on our little homestead. But in the meantime, we're going to take these and have them butchered. But I, I plan to just continue that meat that is very valuable to get that canned and use it that okay. way. And then weird YouTube yeah. life is going to happen where I don't know, maybe I need to do a meatball recipe for something that I'm showing. I might have to go buy some more ground beef, but that's kind of, if a you si- yeah, kind, that's kind of a side <laughs> note. Yeah. So, so I think freezer storage yeah, is great yeah. and all things being perfect. I like to have my freezers, you know, the, the veggie one full, the beef one full, the pork and chicken one full. I like them all to be full, right. but I am working on canning as much as possible of that. Yeah. Get some of that into longer term storage. And, and also of course the freeze dryer. So, you know, um, like, yes. you know, using it for leftovers, we had, I had a big roast I did the other day and I just didn't feel like we were working through it as fast as we could. So I took that, it was a grass fed roast, right? So I chopped it up right, you I froze waste it, that. and then I put it through the harvest, right? And I'm working that type of food storage in too. Yeah. So you're just getting food stocked up everywhere. Now with the freezer yeah. meals, that's another thing that you talk mm-hmm. about a ton on your channel, making right. ahead things. You, you mentioned one for now, one for later. I know you have tons of resources over on the YouTube channel, but what are some of your top favorite, like this always is a slam dunk with my family. It's easy to prepare because I have definitely fallen into the I've tried making freezer meals, but then I've made them overcomplicated to the point where I spent an entire day cooking like a half of a week's worth of food. And I'm like, right. I think I do better when I just make it one at a time. So I think there's a skill that goes with knowing like what works. So I started two decades ago by cooking all my meat for the month in advance, like and I, I couldn't buy that much meat, but like I would take the chicken and I would, it was just the chicken leg quarters, right? Like that was mm-hmm. $6 a bag. And I would boil that down and I would peel the meat from the bones and I would use the broth for upcoming things. And I would freeze the chicken for casseroles for the month. Then I would cook all my ground beef and I would freeze it. And then from there, I got into the one for now, one for later. Like if I'm, if I'm making this broccoli, chicken and rice casserole, I can make two. Mm -hmm. And again, that was even as a smaller family. And so that way on my work weekends, or if I wasn't, what I would liked to do was on Friday, make a big meal for the weekend. But if I couldn't, I knew we had something I could pull out from the freezer. Right. Within the last 10 years, I've gotten into doing these big cooking days where it's pretty much 10 recipes. And I do them um, times three or times four. I have now I have big batch cooking guides. And so they come with the right. grocery list, everything to prep ahead, all the meal assembly, and then how to use them later. And right. so yes. it'll be 40 meals. Yes, it's only 10 recipes. And internet comments will say, well, how can you eat the same thing all the time? Well, you know, 40 meals spread Rotate. out over 12 yes. weeks. Yes. You know, we're, we're not eating the same thing all the time. And I even, um, I took a day maybe in November and this, this will be coming out in a big batch cooking pack, but I did a day where I just was inspired to do all this lasagna and all this baked ziti and just all these like meals I knew we would not be sad to have in the freezer. And we had a huge, like life changing emergency in December. And that was just an example of, six weeks, mama, mama can't cook and do nothing. Now, of course, yes, my husband could cook. The kids are old enough. They could figure it out. Yes, of course. But it was so nice for them to just like, (laughs) I wasn't here. I was with family in another situation. And so they were Uh able to just pull things out. And my 16 year old daughter rotated freezer meals. Like I was gone for eight days straight and Mm -hmm. she was able to feed the family without any other worry or pressure on them with those meals that I had stocked, which happened to be a lot of those meals I did, a lot of the baked seeding meals at that time. You know, it changes. And right now I have a lot of slow cooker freezer meals in my freezer. And let's see, days of the week. Last Saturday, I had my 12-year-old, 13-year-old, 16-year-old. We did a a couple hours of doing 40 like lunch-specific type freezer meals, like taquitos and homemade pop tarts and, you know, things that I have in that particular big batch cooking guide. 
Uh-huh. It's helpful for me. I do cook my own guides because, oh, past Jay Morrell, the grocery list is already there. <laughs> you know, the steps are already oh, there. Oh, exactly. I I go on my blog nonstop. There's always things I'm like, that's what I love about having a blog. Is it's like, you oh, have, this like, is how I did All that. the things you've ever, yeah, like right. thought through before. There's a nice record of exactly. it. Because you forget over the time, like, what what do I like? I don't know. Let me look at my meal pack. I know. I said I love this. Um, my Some of my first videos that started taking off on YouTube you know, nine years ago for me doing freezer cooking and like planning it out on my whiteboard. So I took Mm -hmm. that system that I used and I've replicated it again and again to doing these big batch cooking guides now. But I also, because I do like to cook just not every day, not all day, every day, but you know, I'll want to cook. And so I'll get out the 17 inch cast iron lodge skillet or two of them and I'll do a big bulk meal. But when I cook, I want, I want to not have to cook for a few days. And so I don't mind eating the same thing or serving it up in different ways. Like I will, I will make 10 pounds of sloppy joes and I think I will think, okay, there's dinners and lunches and my kids rip through it and it's not, <laughs> you know, I'll yeah. think I've cooked ahead <laughs> and it's not. And even though I'm like, no, have some watermelon with that, you know, <laughs> let's, let's add some, let's, let's like extend yeah, this. So I try to, um, do that. And again, when we were a smaller family, you know, I would, I, I just feel like it would stretch a little farther sometimes, but so I mix that in with the freezer meals and I can tell when I don't have freezer meals and it's so funny just how, how I am and how we all can be in our heads sometimes. I'm like, well, I don't want to defrost the slow cooker freezer meal. I really wish I had a nine by 13 that I could just defrost. Sometimes it just seems easier to turn on the oven instead of plugging in the slow cooker. I don't. But Uh that's why I like a variety. Yeah. I like the variety. You know, I like knowing that my freezer meal freezer is stocked with things that can go in the the oven, things that can go in the slow cooker or the instant pot, um, things that can be defrosted and the kids can microwave. So Mm -hmm. like right now, you know, they are all into the taquitos because we made them last weekend. And I'm like, we made so many of those, but they might be gone in a week. (laughs) (laughs) It's not going to. It's not going to seem like much soon. That's right. So do you ever just make a meal like you make dinner and then like you eat it all and then you clean up and that's literally it? Or are you always making more for another meal? I try to never do that. (laughs) I try to never do that. Oh, I must spend way too much time in the kitchen. I probably do. I I hardly ever have enough to move to the next meal. Right. So that's my goal. Now, yes, it does happen that things may not go as planned. Again, like we went to the beach the other week. But you're not planning on doing that. I'm not that. planning on doing that. I'm always planning to at least get lunch the next day out of it. Right. You know, at, at least four servings. Okay, not 11 servings. Yes. So I'm always trying to cook enough to get more mileage out of it. And we we could, like, it could be a meal. It, uh, it could be, you know, big batch biscuits and gravy. And we have it for breakfast. Well, we're not going to have that you know, for the next nine meals, but that could be the next three mornings of breakfast as an option for most people, obviously, Hey kid, if you don't want biscuits and gravy, you know, where the bagels are, you know, you know, you know, you you know, where other Mm -hmm. items are that you can grab. Right. But it could be the spirit of the home. (laughs) It could be that, you know, kids end up eating that for lunch the third day and then we're out Uh of it. So I just try to always, I try doesn't always work, but yeah, yeah. Usually I can get us a couple meals out of it. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense because people are always asking me, how do you have time to cook for your family and then do anything else? And what you've done is made it really efficient, probably born out of these times in your life whenever you were working a full-time job. There was a lot going on. You were homeschooling. And now you have situations where you have older kids. Sometimes things happen and you you couldn't be available all of December and then your family ate, which is amazing because right. if I did that, my family would have to just like figure out something. And I, I mean, they could, right. but it's and not, they could you and feel they would, good but... leaving knowing that. Right. It was one less thing I had to worry about. I um, ended up in the hospital a couple times in 2021 between my pregnancy and a situation with my kidney, traumatic birth, E. coli infection, like all these things. Oh, yeah. And so, and I had a surgery. And so, um, and I think I'm like my house, I, I think I was in the hospital once 2022, right before we, we met Lisa in, in real life, mm-hmm. but 
not all of those yes. were planned or scheduled. Only one of those <laughs> things right, were right. Uh, scheduled. And so at one point when I was in the hospital, I just had to put in a Walmart grocery order with easy Walmart, you know, Walmart freezer meals, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, things that I would make on my freezer cooking days because I had been so sick in pregnancy. I wasn't able to get as ahead on my freezer meals as I had per the YouTube video evidence during my other pregnancies. Uh huh. And so in those <laughs> situations, you know, I ordered the, the sausage biscuits already put together and the Stouffer's lasagna and the Uncrustables. And because when you have a family emergency, any kind of pressure you can take off of that is so valuable. So mm -hmm. that's how I bought my freezer meals during one of those times that I was in the hospital because the, the kids are worried at home. My husband's at the hospital with me. My right. mom's here with kids, you know, maybe they had a six month old baby here too. Uh, just, just saying. So if I can stay on top of that, that's helpful with life. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It takes a lot of pressure off. Want to take a break from this episode to tell you about one of our awesome sponsors, Toops and Co. That's T O U P S and Co. I've had a few questions about that lately. I'm like, what are you saying again? All of the sponsors will be linked down in the show notes as well as on simplefarmhouselifepodcast.com. But Toops & Co. is an organic skincare company that I couldn't speak more highly of. I actually just did my makeup because I like to do my makeup before I come out and record no matter what kind of day it's been. I have the Toops & Co. foundation, the mascara. I'm trying to remember what else I have. I have several of their things and I absolutely love it. It's really hard to find a foundation especially that is both quality and good for you. I've struggled with that for years. I even dabbled in making my own for a while. It was really greasy, sort of worked out, but definitely did not have the quality of Tube Cinco where I actually feel like I'm wearing a foundation. I also really love their skincare products. So I love their cleansing oil. They have this tallow balm that especially in the winter, I'm starting to not need it as much. I would go to my little tallow balm container five times a day. I just left it out on my bathroom where I pass by often and put it on my face all throughout the day. Now that it's not as dry because we're not running the wood stove, I'm able to do it like once a day and I'm totally fine. But such a luxurious balm that moisturizes the face, but then it also has all natural and organic ingredients, which is really hard to find quality and something that works. Tubes & Co. is offering Simple Farmhouse Life listeners a 10% off discount by using the code FARMHOUSE. So head over to tubesandco.com, use the code FARMHOUSE to save 10%. I know that you're going to absolutely love their products. A little goes a long way. I haven't had to replace them for a while. I'm almost ready to replace the foundation. And I do a different shade from winter to summer. So I'm in that transition phase of like, I almost need a slight shade darker, which is a good time to get a new foundation. But I know that you are going to absolutely love it. Again, tubesandco.com, use the code farmhouse. Okay, I think we covered most of the, throughout our conversation, most of the audience questions that we had, except for under the category of doing it all, which this is, I think, pretty much every interview I do, no matter what kind of person, you know, I, I do homestead, I do large family, I do homeschool. And this is always one of the topics with questions under it is doing it all. So we'll just do that shortly here because mm -hmm. people just, they need encouragement. Yes. So the first one says, I would love to know what she would recommend to a mama who would love to start a business, but worries it would cause more stress than it's worth. And we have a lot along those lines, like, you know, you and I talk about this all the time. We live this, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we do. So I started my business out of, well, I had a $250 grocery budget. I was trying to not work weekends as a nurse anymore because I was having times, you know, we always want the Lord to guide us. And so I was having these times where Monday morning at like 9 a.m., I was the charge nurse from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., but you don't always get out at 7 a.m. And I had just worked three 12-hour shifts. I would wake up while driving on the way home. And I had some wow. very, very scary, like, I'm driving. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get home to my baby. I'm breastfeeding. And I wake up. This could get emotional. I wake up, like, heading for the mailboxes, and right behind the mailboxes is a pond, and there's another car coming. And mm -hmm. all I had time to do was scream Jesus. 
And like, I was asleep while driving. That was so scary. And I had a few other things. Like at one point, you know, my boys flipped a dresser over, you know, and I was like half asleep because I'd worked a long nursing shift and like somehow the dresser in their room, they were playing around, the dresser fell over, but it was loud. Someone could have got hurt. Yeah. And so, and again, they're both adults now. They made it. I homeschooled them the whole way. They're functioning. (laughs) One's a dad, you know, but those were some of my mama wake up moments. Like, I can't do this. I can't do all these things. I can't homeschool these kids, breastfeed my baby, work a hundred hours on the weekend. I have to, I have to pick and choose. This does get into mamas and online businesses. So I had laid that down, but that gave me that very small grocery budget. And I said two fifty. it was two fifty to three fifty a month. And at the height of that, I was pregnant with baby number six. And so my other kids were two, three, six, nine, and 12 and pregnant with baby number six. And mm-hmm. I had that small grocery budget. Right. And yeah. my, I had been blogging as a hobby and this is 2011. I had mm-hmm. been blogging as a hobby. I had really started my blog in 2018, but like I felt the Lord prompt me to get up every day and blog before the kids. And my first blog was very much a homeschool mom encouragement blog. So every morning I got up and I wrote this little article to encourage homeschool moms. Um, But within a year of that, I realized I was putting 15 to 20 hours a week into that hobby. And it was taking up a lot of mental space, a lot of heart space. And I was just trying to be sensitive to the Lord. And I also knew I wanted to buy more fruits and vegetables. Now you can make that small grocery budget work if you're home and that's all, and that's what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so my prayer began to be for the Lord to show me if I should lay down this hobby of blogging and just pick up one, like three to 11 shift as a nurse on the weekend, or could I somehow make my grocery budget through my blog? And thus, within a few months, I just was guided in a a whole other thing. And I'm not a unicorn. You and I both know any mom can do this. You have a whole course on it. You know, any mom who needs to can go online and can start online businesses and make her grocery budget or make her house payment. For me, the first month I made when things really like turned on. The first month, I doubled my grocery budget. The next month, I made as much as my house payment. The third month, I made as much as my husband, who was working 70 hours a week. And within a year, we brought him home full time. And so we brought him home full time. I say to that, I started the second blog in 2012. We actually brought him home full time in 2013. When I had that sixth baby, we tested it and brought him home for Family Medical Leave Act just to see. It looks like I'm making all this money, but can we really can we make it? Is this Mm -hmm. going to continue? It's been a year. We had found Dave Ramsey in that time. We were just really trying to be Mm grownups. And so the mama's question was if it was worth it. Isn't that her question, Lisa? Yeah. Like, yeah, she'd like to start something like this, but worried about the stress that would cause. Cause it is a lot of work. Like you're a hard worker. (laughs) It is a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you are too, Lisa. And so we both had our reasons. You wanted to bring your husband home full time. I wanted, I needed food and I, and I wanted to bring my husband home full time. I just didn't know it yet, (laughs) you know? And so moms can do this. They can take your course and they can learn everything they need to do. And they can just be like a nap time hustler. You know, they could work one to two hours a day and go slow and steady. I mean, you know, hindsight, looking back, I'm like, yeah, if you could just take a, an hour or two a day and like in a year, you know, or, or less, I mean, we know it can take less amount of time, but let's just say a mom had a goal to be making a part-time income in a year doing the low stress right. model. Yeah. I can tell you, I can tell you how to put yes, your foot on the gas, yeah, but, right? And, and, and drive through the wall. I got that. <laughs> I, I got that figured out. But I'm pretty sure that a mom who wanted or needed to could also do it right, slow right. and steady once she had the tools and the knowledge to yeah. do it. And so I definitely think it's worth it. It has totally changed my family's life. We couldn't even do things like, like within that before things turned on for me and I was doing it as a hobby, you know, our dryer went out and we didn't even have, we didn't have an emergency fund. You know, Dave Ramsey talks about a thousand dollars emergency fund. And some folks say 
that's not enough. Well, my goodness, a thousand dollar emergency fund is life changing for a family when you don't have one. Right. And so our dryer went out. It was three hundred dollars at that time for another dryer. We couldn't afford it, and the dryer we had was putting holes in our clothes somehow. So it was, it was so sad. Pretty important. Yeah. And we had to do one of those like Rena Center dryers. So for me, it has been totally worth it because. My dryer could go out today and I could order one on the Lowe's app and try, and I mean, you know, this is how high rolling we are. We could just get another dryer <laughs> and that's amazing. So it has been, it's it, sure it's hard work. Yes, it's hard work, but we are in a totally different place than we were 12 years ago. Yeah. There's, there's so much guilt associated with pursuing something whenever you are a mom and like you mentioned, there are times to do it that don't, I mean, if you don't put the foot fully on the gas, like you were saying, and you and I, we've had this conversation in real life a ton. There are a lot of boundaries you put in place. Like somebody asks, well, how do you fit homeschool in and run a business? You've told me how your schedule works and it involves you being a mom, you know, for most of your kids waking hours, which is yes. very inspirational because I think that. We, especially in the beginning before you figured out how to turn it into a real business where you've hired people to help you and there's, you know, a lot of moving parts. We've scaled. Yeah, it is all you. And so it's so hard to see, like, I've heard people say, well, there's no possible way you're able to do this and still be a good mom. And I'm like, you have, you don't know what all goes on in the way that I schedule my time. Mm -hmm. And I know the way that you've scheduled your time is you're just a, a homeschool mom most of the time. And then, I don't know, yeah. you've shifted through different schedules throughout the years. But currently, I think you're just filming one day a week or something like that. I forget how you said you currently have it. Yeah, yeah. So I usually, yeah, I usually have like one dedicated filming day that I do my my biggest video. And then I'll have another video that I like, I'm doing little snippets. But if I'm just showing what I put on the plates for dinner, that doesn't take anything from my family. Yeah, But right. if I'm canning... 380 pounds of tomatoes, or if I'm doing 40 freezer meals, that's going to be an all day project, yes, <laughs> you know, need to a, say the least. Yeah, definitely. Um, and some of y'all know, you know, from my videos, I'm, I've had a few times this winter where I just stayed up all night and I got it done. I don't do that every day. Now, part of that is my work, right? Because I'm a content creator and I'm making this video and I have to get this done basically on this Saturday, even if it takes the four twenty, the full 24 hours. And I don't do that often, yeah. but once in a while, that's, I guess these days, how I'm, I'm reckless or whatever, how I push through, but it's only that one day. My goal is Sunday through Thursday or Friday. I'm all on regular mom, full on mom, yep. full on mom. And over the years, like people might say, Oh, well, you have 14 people who work for you. Well, I started, I had almost two years of just myself. And so I can say how I did it then with my husband. Working yeah, 70, exactly. I, and yeah. I will. I'll say we all that have that background. <laughs> help me get back to that. But, you know, I know what it's like to work for two years with no help and my husband being gone all the time. And I did that to build my business. Now I have scaled it and I hire out everything that does not have to have my face on it, which most of the things right. that make money in my business have my face on it, yes. you know, videos and sponsorships and live events and those kind of things. But there's a whole workload behind that, that oh, I yeah, that's just the can hire tip. out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's how I, that's how I'm still in this 12 years later. I have not always yes. had it where I can just be a full on mom five to six days a week. And I say the five days because there might be a week like, we went to the beach a few weeks ago. Well, when I came back, I filmed Friday and Saturday to get to get myself caught up. But again, compared to working 40 plus hours a week as a as a charge nurse on the weekends, um, poor me if I have to work two hours, it's okay. I'm not two hours, two hours is even better, <laughs> two days. Um, yeah. But so when I first started though, so this will sound scary. So don't listen ladies if you're scared. But, uh, or if you think this may scare you, but <laughs> this is the reality of what it took me. So I worked in the mornings, early mornings, like, you know, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. or so. You know, I'd work those early morning hours. I had kids. I think my oldest at the time was 12. So basically, kids would need to like get up and watch TV until I came downstairs type thing. Um, and we would have our morning. So morning could be like, 
8 to 12, 9 to 12, whatever we want to call the morning. I'm on yeah. very little sleep, but we'll get to the school, the sleep part. About 12 or 1-ish when I could put my youngest ones down for a nap. Now, I have always had young kids that have taken excellent naps, like two or three hour naps, no problem. Mm-hmm. Part okay. of that is I have lived a thousand hours outside this whole time before it was a thing. We are okay. always big outside people. We get outside heavy and, you know, play and farm and hold the goat. And we work hard, even my young kids. Like I'm making sure they're playing and I'm making sure they're sleeping well. Mm-hmm. So then during their nap time, I would work again. And of course, older kids would have things right. that they could work on during that time. And so then from like three to seven, I would be full on mom again. So I had pockets of mom time, like eight to noon, three to seven. And then at seven, cause my husband would be home or uh, think of our schedule there for part of that. No, he would be going to work. So at seven, I would start working again. I could work at the kitchen table for uh-huh. those first couple hours until I got kids to bed. Right. And then I would work until 11 or 12 and be back up at six working. But just for a season, you know, that's the thing is yes. that's exactly, that sounds like the early parts of my business, but you could, I could never run like that for very long. It was always just like, yeah. this is very short term. <laughs> this is why we, you know, we didn't know the full plan, but I did have money coming out of the internet, which was a great incentive. You know, mm-hmm. I could buy fruits and vegetables. So that's the encouragement I needed. And then obviously within a year, it became apparent something had to happen. And so that is where we started the process of bringing my husband home full time. So it was probably, you know, a year to a year and a half that I was running like that. And also on the weekends. So I could work 60 to 70 hours a week. I took no time off definitely during that first year. And I just worked like a mad woman all the time. So yeah. 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 But people don't have to do that method, but yeah. that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. And you know, some... and then from there I started hiring help and right. trying to get myself out of that hole. Then the next couple years became, let's get myself out of what I've, of this hole, but let's let the money not stop, please. <laughs> and then I had to learn and scale from there. Yes. Yes. That's all part of the part of the process. And it's daunting whenever, like if I were to think, okay, I'm going to do this all over again. I don't, I don't know because it would just, I've already done it. And now I'm like, man, that sounds exhausting. But at the time it felt like very fun, you know, because it was a new thing yes. that I was trying to it achieve. Was exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like there, this, look at this. I am making more than my husband. And, uh, and again, we had found Dave Ramsey and I had, I also had $70,000 in student loan debt. And so I had just figured in my early thirties, I mean, those, those babies were just, they were deferred, (laughs) you know, that was deferred. I was never going to be able to pay that, uh, being a large and growing family and just on my husband's income. And so for the first time I had hope now, my, my hope is in the Lord and I was in a total totally fine mindset to be home, to stretch every penny, to focus on my children and homeschool them. And that's how it would always be. And things would never change. And so my heart and mindset are still those things only financially, which has been, you know, very obvious, a very important thing to me. We've been able to do wild things like pay off all of my student loan debt. Like, Hey, Mm -hmm. mom's not in student loan debt anymore. And I actually know about these things to teach my own children. So they don't have student loan debt. But growing up in public school, you know, the whole drill was you got to get a degree, you got to get a degree, you got to go to college or you're nothing. And as a young adult, I felt that way. I felt like I was worthless unless I had a college degree. That's what public school did for me. So (laughs) I, I jumped out and started seeking that full force. And obviously the Lord guided me down different paths along the way and changed my mindset and my heart. But still at 30, I was there with all that debt from that journey I had to go on. Right, right. Yeah. uh, Yep. Yeah. So you had some motivation behind that. And yes, I always tell people, you know, this, this question was from a mom who wanted to start a business. And, you know, we're speaking to her, not everybody is called to do that. Not everybody wants to do that. 100% fine. You know, yes, my husband and I had that goal together. We both knew that we wanted to start some kind of family business. And so it looked like him working 
while I pursued that during early mornings, afternoons, and late nights. And then over time, I built it in a lot of the similar ways that you did. And then it comes down to at this point, which you and I have talked about a ton, priorities, because once you start getting some opportunity, you're like, wow, I could do this, 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 and this. And you know, at some point you're like, you know what? Nope. Remember the original goal? Okay. That's where we are. We're going to stay comfortable with that goal. We're not going to have to do absolutely everything. That's and right. you know, you have to constantly remind yourself of that. I do. Yeah. There was some other income streams and I'm like, I don't have to, I don't have to do this. Like I no. love having multiple <laughs> income streams, but then there's a bunch. Yeah, it's like, great, we but don't, we don't have to do that. We don't we have don't to do have everything. To do <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know there's so much opportunity. There's so many ways to do it. And we go and we, you know, hang out with other creators. Like I I hang out with people who do YouTube, who do blogging, who do recently somebody who does TikTok and Instagram. And I'm like, okay, I don't have to do all of these things. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) You know, that's right. Yeah. So when people, when women wonder, is the, is it saturated? Is there room for new people? Is there room for me? Should I start a blog? Cause there's so many blogs out there. Yes, you should. You should start it. There's plenty of room out there, right, Lisa? Well, yeah, I'm always what's what I find is lately I've been feeling so old because all the people that I've been meeting have been in this for like two years, three years. I'm like, wait, what? Like I'm now that's, old. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm the grandma blogger now. So I know. <laughs> that happened fast. All right. So to go back into our conversation, tell people about where they can find you. You mentioned the large family meal packs, which basically explain how to grocery shop and cook with these large meals in the freezer. You have whole guides on that over at largefamilytable.com. Where else can people follow up with you? The biggest thing that I'm working on right now is my Successful Business Mama course. And it is for mamas who are trying to grow online businesses while raising their families. Yes. And so I have a wait list for that, which is my big thing I like to cheerlead right now, which is just largefamilytable.com forward slash business. Okay. I'm actually leaving today to go for 36 hours. This is how mama does this. So I can try to film as many of my videos for my modules as possible. Okay. And just knock it out. I'm, I'm hoping that this, that we're launching this like in June. That's my goal. I have to have that goal ahead of me. So that's coming. So any moms who are interested for my systems on how I have done all this for 12 years and all the different ways I've made money, because I've made money as a full-time blogger and through affiliates and through YouTube and through sponsorships and through digital products and all the things. So I'm going to dive into all of that too. Oh, that's going to be so valuable because yeah, you have so much experience and then I just love because I am the grandma creator. Yes, you are the grandma creator. <laughs> yes. I know if I'm if I'm like a middle aged creator, you're yes, I'm the you're even creator. yeah you're even further up there in that. <laughs> I'm the 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 OG. Yes. Yes, and it's been inspiring to talk to you about how all the different ways throughout the years that you've been able to do that while keeping your main priority as a mom the main thing, which is mm-hmm. very inspiring to me because that's something that I can always learn from. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so well, much. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Simple Farmhouse Life podcast. Make sure to go check out Jay Marill on all of the platforms that she mentioned. And I will see you in the next episode. Yeah.